big foam donut that we put inside the tyre. Okay. And so you're riding on that and getting them just tuned so they're soft enough to get your traction but not so soft that it all falls off the wheel is a, is a really big part of it. If you look at the top guys, uh, it actually looks like they're riding on a flat tyre. Okay. That's a foam donut. Yeah, pretty so much. If you cut it in half, it looks like like a, an aero chocolate bar. Okay. Yeah. And that uh, also helps against the possibility of a flat or something like it, that in these. You cannot get a flat. There's no air in there to come out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Cool off the head with a little bit of a shower yeah. before getting going again. Companies like uh, Golden Tire and Mitis and they actually. They've uh, developed proper tyres specific for this style of racing that are really soft and get you massive traction. All right. Well, I've just heard we're going to head down to Anina, where she is with three of the top four riders right now. Anina, how's it going? Very good. And here, we, indeed, it's going very well. We're here with the winners almost, right? Um, Doogie and Ben, how did that go? You got a little breathing now, a little look back? Yeah, it went, it went absolutely perfect for me. I, uh, nothing silly, just nice and steady and just kept chipping away. Yeah, all right. perfect. We all know your cousins and waiting now for probably the next one is your brother coming. So how's that? Yeah, no, we've always, uh, we've always rode this event together. So it's always great. We're always pleased to see each other at the finish. But to have two of us on the podium this time is amazing. But, you know, Dan's been out injured for a long time with a broken foot. He shouldn't really be here, but he's... he's it should be coming over that hill in a moment, so yeah, no, we're going to be pleased to see him as well. So yeah, another good day in Erzberg for us. Is that kind of a mental support to know that the whole family is here, kind of? Uh, I think it is, yeah. We're a close family and uh, we all support each other, so uh, it's nice to have the opportunity to ride together and, and have this success together, you know, too. Two cousins on the on the podium is uh, you know, we're really really pleased with that. We've always ridden since about three years old down on our farm or over at Doug's. We've always competed together, and Doug was quite successful in his day, <laughs> and he's uh, and he's keeping it up. He's doing well. <laughs> Still is indeed second place here. Um, now it's starting to rain. It seems. How were the conditions in the back of the track? We've heard in the beginning that there it's it was supposed to be quite foggy. Was that is that true? Yeah, it was quite foggy on the top, on the um, on the cliffs, so it will be quite quite dangerous, and uh, this rain's not going to help anybody, definitely. Yeah, no, it was a difficult race, really, from the start. You know, there's been a lot of water over the last uh, couple of days, and uh, like Ben said, it got difficult to see right at the top, so, you know, I think we just went a little bit more sensible up there and, uh, you know, concentrated on keep pushing and keep going, but uh, the people out there still now, they're really going to be suffering, really, really suffering, so... Uh, good luck to them they need all they can get tell me a little bit i have no idea how it is obviously to be on such a track what got, what crosses through your mind in these hours nothing i'm just looking about three meters in front and just think if i can get to there then i can get to there and <laughs> just keep chipping away and uh trying to breathe and just just as soon as you stop for me if i stop then that is it i'd probably not want to start again so i just keep chipping away nice and steady yeah and do you have the overview while you're on it? Do you know how many riders are in front of you or actually not? There's quite a few people, you know, trying to tell you that you're in fourth or fifth or wherever you are, which is quite good. There are people trying to give you a drink, which is always welcome, that's for sure. And uh, that's a, it's a good thing about the event. There's a lot of support from the public and, uh, and that's a, a big part of it. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a fantastic uh, course this year, really good. Uh, a lot of riding, but really pushed you to the limit, which is difficult to do. So, yeah, and I think we must congratulate Carl on his course this year. He's very, very successful, Erzberg, and uh, and especially for us because we had second and third. I, I think it was perfect. It was probably <laughs> yeah, the most amazing yeah. course. The best event I've done. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. All right, and we have as well Paul over here. May I quickly hang in here? Congratulations to you. you. Oh, sorry, to you as well. Four British guys in top, how's that? How, how did it go for you and how's that feeling? Yeah, it feels good. The British guys always go well at Erzberg, but it, this is the first time it's the first four places. So, yeah, um, really excited to finish in fourth, but would have liked to have been on the podium, but I came here for a top five and I've, I've gone away with one. So, yeah, I'm well happy. You're probably going to come again, right? Yeah, we always come back, don't we? We say we won't when we get home and everything else, but then we, we end up booking on again next year. <laughs> All right, congratulations, and thank you very much for the conversation. No 
All right, thanks a lot, Anina. I mean, you heard it from uh, the mouths of these guys as we head back over to Carl's and Chris. You book it anyway, and you come back. Are we going to see you coming back and maybe uh, riding here again next year? I reckon so. Yeah, I'm sure we'll make a plan to get here again. Yeah? Yeah. After looking at it and having to sit here with me all day long, you kind of got the itch again, hey? Yeah. Go to Romaniacs, win that one for us, and then uh, come on back next year with a good head of steam for That'll this one. Very, very nice. Yeah. And these are the guys that we're talking about. The top guys in the world don't want to be out there now. And they're suffering. As, suffering. Uh, as Dougie said, suffering. It's incredible how much talent comes out of that one family. It's amazing. Here comes Dan. All right. 30 kilometers later. Soaking wet beat to death tired and you come across that finish line and it all goes away <laughs> so the second of the Hemingway boys comes across the finish line he's got seventh place and he seems pretty chuffed about it, actually. <laughs> Gotta love that emotion. It's awesome. All right, Anina, we're going to throw down to you so you can uh, have a quick chat with Dan and uh, hear how he's doing. Yeah, I think we have to let him breathe a little bit more. Hello and welcome here. Congratulations. You're injured. How did that go with that injury? Um, well, I'm just really chuffed to be here. I mean, I, I didn't, I could not have pushed at all. I mean, um, I had to just make sure that I didn't do anything silly, make sure that I didn't hit anything too fast. But yeah, I was, um, I was, I'm just happy to be here. I was crying on the way to the last, last section. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was hard, was that? Very hard. So, um, this is the second time, third time on my bike for three and a half months after breaking the foot, so to come here and finish this. By the way, George, Harry, Emma, if you're still watching, I'm alive. I'm all right. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. How's that for you? We had a little talk with your cousin and your brother before here, if that is supportive. Did you know already they were here? I had a feeling there would be, yeah, I had a, I had a good feeling that uh, Doug definitely would have been up here and, and certainly Ben as well. I didn't, uh, didn't realise how high, but I knew they'd be here. Yeah, we don't stop with Yorkshire and we don't stop. And so you were looking forward to that and you knew they were going to be here and looking forward to that, huh? That's yeah. nice to have the family waiting here for you. Yeah, this is, um, this is probably nearly the fourth time that we've been here and all three of us have finished. So, you know, I'm just, it's absolutely fantastic achievement for us all three, but... Uh, yeah, and I, I broke my bike early on, I had no fan and no water, so I've just taken it steady and we've we got to the end, so I'm happy with that. One last question, what kind of a relation do you riders have to your bike? Um, well, I'm going to be, I'm not very happy with Carl because he's really hurt my bike today as Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I love my bike, you know, you've got to love your bike. If you don't love your bike, you might as well pack up and go home. Uh, <laughs> all right, thank you very much and enjoy the arrival here and I pass the word on to Troy again. Thanks, Anina. Speaking of relationships with the bikes, I imagine that sometimes, Chris, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with the bikes when you're out there. Uh, it's working while you love it. If something's going wrong, you hate it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to shout at the bike. It's not very <laughs> often the bike's fault. <laughs> no. All right, back over to Carl's Diner, and look at that. It is just an ice arena up there right now. You can see how wet those stones are. Oof. I'm really glad I'm sitting in this box at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like any type of fun. Well, at the starting oh, area. one. Sip Valley. Seppi, hey. And he's steaming. Steaming Seppi. I think it's the second time he's won the prologue. Second or third time. Second time, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he also won the um, rocket ride. Yep. Yep. Here we are back at Dynamite. Curious to know who's rolling into dynamite right now. Looks like there's a couple of guys, aren't there? 
Well, I don't think it's going to get Chock-a-Block in there, but I imagine it might get a little busy in the next half an hour or so. Speaking of that, there's only about a half an hour left. So who do we got there? Number 46. And that is Xavier Leon Soleil. So the Spanish guy managed to make it through Carl's dinner, and he is at the bottom of Dynamite getting ready to go. Xavier's another uh, top Spanish trials rider from a few years back now that's he's made the crossover into extreme enduros so if he can find some energy i think he'll fly up here but i would have wouldn't imagine it's a matter of finding that too, energy though no there's probably not too much left in the tank at the moment i'm wondering if it would make any sense speaking of tank because we were talking about the gasoline issue before and we've seen a lot of these guys come through with the, you know, not the see-through tank, but you can see that there's still a fairly significant amount of gasoline left in the tank. Would it make sense to have either a smaller tank or just start off with less fuel in there to save weight? The problem you have is it's, it's such a gamble because you don't, when you set off, you don't know what's coming. No one's really ridden the entire track. No one's walked it, so you, you're dealing with the unknown. It'd be taking quite a risk to well, it'd be nice to have the bike nice and light for sure but you know it'd be a pretty silly way of dnfing Erzberg. What, what can you do to make these bikes lighter in order to make these sections here or a section like carl's dinner a little bit easier to navigate because of maneuverability you know if you've got to have the power of a 300 or even a 450 in some cases let's talk from a 300 standpoint what kind of things could you do to the bike in order to lighten it up without reducing strength and durability. To be honest, uh, with, with the KTM 300, for example, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, the factory, they've already invested millions of euros in making the bike as light as it can feasibly be. And you can swap certain parts, like lighter exhausts, uh, but there's really not a lot. I mean, KTM's big thing is that they are ready to race motorcycles, and they, they really are, especially yeah. for this sort of type of extreme hard enduro. It's a perfect bike. Well, I think so. It's my bike of choice anyway. 36 minutes and counting remaining. It looks like Xavier is going to manage it. It also looks like there's a couple of other guys there in Dynamite that will join him there, but he's still got five kilometers to go before that finish area, and the rain is starting to pour down here. It is not getting any lighter out there, and that's going to make this section also very, very slippery. Let's see who else we're having in the mix here in Dynamite. He had to tell me that is from here. One person we have lost is uh, a Mexican. Right. I haven't seen them for a while, from him here for a while. Not since Carl's Diner. See now it's difficult to get those shots of in the distance because of the sheer amount of rain that's coming down. Could that be Homero Diaz there at the top? I, I can't really tell. We don't really have a good view of the number. The Camaro Xavier is still fighting on it here. Yeah, Homero's a Red Bull rider, so you can only pick them out pretty quick. Look at that rainfall, man, oh man. Just not making life any easier at all on these riders. Xavier off the bike, repositioning everything. I mean, it's a struggle that you guys have every year with the weather here because it's A, in the mountains, and, and B, you just never know what's gonna happen. It can, this event, it can be absolutely anything from sort of 35 degrees some years and you just the heat's radiating up off the rocks and you're just getting absolutely drilled. So they think that snow and then this muck that we've got this year. I think it was like 2005 you guys had snow here during the competition. Uh, yeah, Robert. thankfully that was before I got into extreme <laughs> yeah. insurance. Here we go, dynamite checkpoint cleared by Xavier, excuse me, yeah, Xavier Leon Soleil, number 46. So how many guys have we got in there so far? We've got seven guys with Ben Hemingway coming in, Dan yeah. Hemingway, excuse me. 
and uh, Xavier will uh, bring it up to nine because there was one rider before him whose number plate I didn't see. So, uh, and still we've got a couple of riders here with uh, about 20 minutes left to go. So we might just make the 10, maybe even 11 mark here. That's number 59, I think. It was at 59? Yeah. Oh, Carsten Steinhorner. Steinhorner from Germany. He is up and through. He's looking pretty strong, too, like he came up there with a fair bit of firepower. Looking, looking really strong, so I think we're going to have a couple of new faces uh, coming into the finish line yeah. here. That's one of the really cool things with Esberg, too. Every year there's someone that pops up that we've never heard of before that uh, comes through. All right, well, uh, while these guys work on getting their way down to the finish line, we are going to head over to Anina at the finish line, who is standing with Johnny Walker. Anina? Yes, here we are with the winner, the very young winner. Johnny, how is it going? <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing feeling to get to the finish and be first. Like, I'm so excited for myself right now, so I'm sure. So you're starting to realize this? Yeah, it's starting to sink in. Like, I've trained so hard, it's been like a dream for me to win this race. For the last two months I've been training, especially for this race, and you know, to actually win it, it's just... It doesn't sink in yet. Well done. Congratulations from my side again. Now, we all know about Graham Jarvis. Does, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I'm, re I'm really sorry for Graham. Like, <coughs> I was in the lead, and um, I had a bit of a lead. And then someone said that Graham is disqualified because he missed a checkpoint. So after that, I took it easy and just tried to save the bike. And uh, he made the pass on me, and I, was just, I let him go because I knew that he was going to be disqualified. And then when I came here, and it, like... I was actually the winner. It was just an amazing feeling. So you really get the infos out there. People just keep on updating you guys, hey? Yeah, yeah. Like, they're good at the checkpoints, telling you what's happening and that. So some of them are a bit slow at wiping the finger of a number, but, you know, you've got to shout at them, keep them going. So it's been good. What's the next thing you're going to do right after this interview? Um, I have to... Uh, I'm um, going to go and get changed and have a shower and probably go to sleep, to be honest. I'm pretty tired. And about that crash, now I can really see that you're getting a little green around your mouth. Is that sore? Yeah, it's a little bit sore. My neck's sore, but just when it happened, um, it knocked the wind out of me a bit. I couldn't breathe for a little bit, so I had to slow down, and then obviously I got going again, and off I went. But so you were like, I'm still going to do it, or how was that? Yeah, obviously I, I knew that I had the lead, so I, I had to keep pushing, I had to keep pushing, and here we are now. Here we are now. Congratulations, yeah. indeed. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Johnny, and good rest. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Anina. Johnny Walker, a very pleased and very tired winner here today. Uh, I think we can officially say we've got 10 guys already in the finish area because the first two guys, although they were disqualified, did make it to the finish area. I mean, what's the call on that one? But uh, we'll talk about that afterwards. We're going to go down to Constanza first. She's got somebody who's kind of important for this event with her right now. Hans Wert, Sie sind der Renndirektor hier beim Red Bull Hair Scramble und Sie hatten heute jede Menge zu tun. Geben wir es vielleicht chronologisch an. Ähm, zuallererst die Disqualifikation von Graham Chavez und von Letty. Was genau ist da passiert? Ja, wir haben auf, einer, auf der Vorderseite des Berges eine so Sektion. So on the front side of the mountain, in jeder Richtung zu befahren that ist. the guys das have to drive drei three times in the Jarvis different directions and Jarvis and Letty Bickler they just didn't do it and they missed the vorher, checkpoint und there sehen, and dass diese beiden Herrschaften wahrscheinlich einen Pfeil übersehen haben yeah they Vorsatz probably missed uh, one of the arrows there and that's why they were disqualified Fahrer ins Ziel gekommen sind dieses Jahr weil vor wenigen Minuten mussten sie das Rennen abbrechen was war da der Grund Ja, derzeit haben wir stark Regen, das wäre grundsätzlich nicht das Problem gewesen, doch am Berg ist starker Nebel eingefallen. Yeah, because there's a heavy rain and, uh, and heavy uh, fog up top and it makes it very difficult to see up there. That was one of the reasons why we've had to cut the race off in past and... Uh, so you know as the race director of this mountain really well. Yeah. Am Berg ist immer so ein bisschen der Kampf zwischen dem Streckenbau und den Fahrern. Natürlich ist dieser Kampf sehr positiv und sportlich zu sehen. 
the riders and the weniger Fahrer ins Ziel kommen, desto mehr freut es natürlich den Streckenbau. And the, the hill, so obviously the fewer riders that come into the finish area means we have to do some work on the track. Etwas vereinfacht wurde, aber eigentlich jeder Fahrer, mit dem ich jetzt nachher gesprochen habe, hat gesagt, es war härter, noch härter als letztes Jahr. And most of the riders said it was harder than last year. Wir müssen also jedes Jahr ein bisschen die Schraube anziehen. This is actually the wish from the riders that we have to change this and do a little bit of change from year to year. Wir haben also die No-Help-Zone wesentlich verlängert und dadurch ist es... Ja, und was wir gemacht haben, ist, dass wir mehr No-Help-Zones dieses Jahr gemacht haben und sie so es macht es mehr schwierig. Das wahrscheinlich schon über nächstes Jahr nach, oder? Natürlich, weil wir heute auch schon neue Sektionen für 2013 gefunden haben. Natürlich, heute haben wir ein paar neue Sektionen für 2013 gefunden, also werden wir ein paar neue Sachen für nächstes Jahr haben. Okay. All right, well, we've already heard uh, for next year when you come back, they're going to have some new sections. What are you, are you looking forward to the terror that's going to be coming in and confronting you then? Uh, I'm subtly reconsidering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to hear from the race director's point of view you know, about what happened with, uh, with Jarvis and with Andy. Well, missing, missing a full section, I mean, you had to, you really, the, the fog must have been incredibly thick up there. You know, from our perspective, we just see the layer that, that is at the top of, of some of the tracks here, but we don't really see how thick it is actually on the backside. And so it must have been just insanely thick. But I, I can't imagine that Graham, after last year's tragedy, would not see the, or, or not pay as much attention as possible to get those arrows and follow the lines. I, I can't imagine his frustration. All right, well, it sounds like we're going back down to Anina again. Uh, Anina, what's going on down there? Who you got with yes, us? Yes, I'm standing here. Oh, no, Entschuldigung, auf Deutsch machen wir das jetzt. Ich stehe hier mit dem Hauptveranstalter, mit dem Karl Kartoff. Jetzt wurde das Rennen abgebrochen. Yeah, we have just been yeah, the race has just been cancelled. Um, yeah, well, it turns out that because there's too much fog and a lot of rain up top, it's just becoming a little bit too dangerous, and so because of the fog situation, we have to stop the race. And that means uh, nobody really is going to make it into the finish in time, and uh, so that's why we stopped it. Yeah, the problem is because of the, uh, the mountain being basically and shrouded in fog, the people won't be able to find their way to the finish area. Ganz ehrlich gesagt, es ist so, dass die Veranstaltung abhängt von allen Leuten, die hier arbeiten. Es fängt bei den Sicherheitskräften an, Bergrettung, Rettung, uh, Tourguides. So this uh, event basically is uh, dependent on everybody that works here, from the uh, the mountain rescue teams to the first aid teams and all of the staff on the sidelines. And uh, that basically means that, uh, you know, we have to make the decision between all of us. And, and uh, it's not just one person that's making the final decision here. Ein paar Worte zur Vorbereitung hier im Vorfeld, die Arbeit, logistisch, was ist das für ein Aufwand? Was muss man sich da vorstellen? Logistisch speaking, what do you have to do here? What's up? Wir haben tonnenweise Pressematerial zu bearbeiten. We have tons of press material we have to send out. We have to coordinate all the tour guides and all the medical staff. And of course we have to coordinate all the viewers and everybody that's on the sidelines and camping. And we're actually a really big family, and uh, and we have to do this for the riders to make it properly. And we do it, uh, we do it with with love. Uh, the award ceremony is going to happen right here. At four o'clock, right on the dot, we're going to do the award ceremony. Thank you.